everybody. This is Nurse Mo, and welcome back. This is episode 52 of the Straight A Nursing Podcast, and today we are going to be talking about something that is clearly stressing you all out, and that is how to manage your time and be organized in nursing school and even in your prereqs when you have so much to do and the pressure is really high. So today's episode is all about organizing and managing your time. So whether you're a pre-nursing student or a nursing student, all of these tips that I'm going to share with you today can and have helped many, many other students. So one of the reasons that this has been top of mind for me lately is not just that when I'm on social media, I see how much everyone out there is struggling with this, but I recently struggled with it as well. So as some of you may know, I work full time. I have my website, my podcast, the planners. I have a very busy, what I call my empire that have that. And then on top of all that, I have graduate school that I started up again this past semester. And maybe recently you heard my episode about how my master's program has differed from my bachelor's program, but that doesn't necessarily mean that my master's program is a walk in the park. And that really hit home for me a few weeks back when, I'll be honest, I was kind of rushing through and just going through the motions. I had a lot of other stuff going on in my life and my educational needs kind of took a back seat for that week. And what happened was I had a quiz in my advanced physical assessment class and it's online, it's open book and it's 10 questions. And I really scanned the chapters. It was four chapters, very intense, a lot of reading. I didn't have time to do all the reading, so I scanned the chapters real quick and then just relied on my ability to look up and research the questions as I went through the quiz. Well, the quiz is timed. There's half an hour for the quiz, so you only get three minutes per question. And I grossly overestimated my ability to take a quiz like that on the fly, and I did not do so great. Newsflash, I did not get a straight A on my physical assessment quiz, but to be fair, I did not put in straight A effort either. So I started looking at how I was managing my time, how I was organizing myself, and I realized I wasn't following my own advice. So I went back to my tried and true methods from my undergrad, got myself organized, and now everything is back on track. And I want you to be on track as well, whether you're mid-semester and drowning, or you're looking forward to the next semester starting, maybe you're a new student, or you're going to commit to starting your semester on the right foot. So The very first thing that I want to talk to you about, and I go over all of this in my book, Nursing School Thrive Guide, and in a little more detail. So if you're interested in that, you can go to Amazon and check it out. It's called Nursing School Thrive Guide. I'll put a link in the show notes as well. But the first thing that I want you to do is take a look at the syllabus for each class. So hopefully your professors give you the syllabus before classes start, ideally, If not, you're going to be a little bit busy right at the very beginning gathering the information from your syllabus, but go through the syllabus. It should have in there everything that you have to do for the semester. All the quizzes, all the discussion board posts, all the projects, all the exams, everything. And I want you to take each of those things and open up an Excel spreadsheet or a Google spreadsheet some kind of spreadsheet program and start putting each of those things in as a line item. Put the date, the class that it's for, what the item is. And when I say date, I mean the date that it's due, the day by which you have to have it done. Don't worry about ordering it just yet. Get everything in there and then you're going to sort it by ascending order and What you'll have at that point is basically a to-do list for the whole semester. And I love this method because I can cross things off as I finish them. And it feels so good to cross everything off your to-do list. Plus, you can just kind of get a bird's eye view of what you have to get done. So when I talk about 
everything that you have to do, I want you to get really granular with this. So for instance, let's say you have to make a discussion board post every Friday, but then you also have to respond to two of your classmates discussion board posts by a certain date. Make sure you put that response requirement in your to-do list as well, because this is part of your grade, actually responding to others' posts. So get very granular. If you have to read a chapter by a certain date so that you're prepared for a test or a quiz or a project or a lecture, put that in your to-do list. Get down to the nitty gritty. If you need to bring a certificate from an online module that you finished, put that in your to-do list. So this list will be very long. It will look overwhelming, but because everything is in there, you really do get an idea of what needs to be done and when it needs to be done. So you're going to make that list. You're going to print it out. I carry that list with me everywhere in my planner so that I always have it to refer to and can just cross things off as I get them done. So right now, I believe I'm in week eight or the end of week seven for my master's program semester. And I'm already almost done with the first page of that two page list. So I'm feeling pretty good because I'm getting things done. Now for your day to day time management and organization, you have a couple of different options. Actually, you have a few options. So one of the options is to go electronic only. I don't recommend this, but that's me. Some people can do this and they can make it work for them. So if you're one of those people, more power to you. What I recommend if you're using digital only you need to get beyond just putting in your appointments into your calendar. You need to put in to-do items and all of the due dates for projects, exams, quizzes, everything. Everything should go into your digital calendar. Otherwise, it's a pretty useless thing to use because it really only tells you when you have class or when you need to show up for an exam. You have to have a full idea of what is on your plate before you can get your schedule under control and get yourself on track. So if you're using a digital only system, I want you to put everything in there and we'll talk about that in just a bit. The other thing that you can do is a paper only system. I also don't fully recommend this just because sometimes you might not have your paper calendar with you, but maybe you are one of those people that carry it absolutely everywhere. So that is an option. What I recommend is a bit of a hybrid approach where I have my paper calendar that is my main scheduling system, but then I use my Google calendar or my iPhone calendar for things that require my physical body to be at a certain place at a certain time. So appointments, places to be are on my phone calendar, and then everything else, including those appointments, are in my paper calendar. So a few different options. I recommend a hybrid approach, but if you've tried a system in the past and you know it works for you and you're great at doing all digital all the time, more power to you. If you're great at doing all paper all the time, then great. The key is to find the system that works for you. So whatever system you land on, the very first thing that I want you to do with that calendar, whether it's digital or paper, is go through your to-do list, your syllabus, and I want you to write down in your calendar or your digital calendar, all the due dates for things, every exam, every quiz, every face-to-face class meeting, every discussion board post, every date by which you need to have a chapter read, every discussion board post response, everything. Write it in your calendar. I write school stuff in red so that I see it and I don't miss it. So that was the very first thing that I did when I had to reevaluate how I was managing my time. I realized my calendar didn't really have time allocated in it for doing those readings for my physical assessment course. But guess what? It does now and I expect to do much better on my next quiz. So get all of those things in there. And then I want you to go back and put in all of the things that you have to do for your life. So this is your doctor's appointments, your kids' schedules, 
everything that you have to do to keep your life running smoothly needs to go into your calendar as well. And you'll quickly start to realize that you're going to have to be very careful and very stingy with your time if you are going to get everything done. And then, of course, I always advocate that we take care of ourselves. So I want you to schedule in time for things that bring you joy. So maybe this is exercise, which is very, very important. Even if it's just getting outside for a walk, it's so beneficial to get out, move your body, and breathe fresh air. So put into your calendar those things that you're going to do for self-care, whether it's exercise, like I mentioned, soaking in the in the bubble bath on Sunday nights like I used to do as a nursing student, um, seeing friends, whatever it is, get it in there. It counts and you need to make time for it. So ideally, the calendar system that you're using provides you with a monthly overview as well as at least a weekly overview. So what I like to do is put the big things on my monthly overview, and then I get more into the hour-by-hour planning of my time in that weekly overview, or if you're using a digital calendar where you've got a good daily overview you'll get a little bit more detailed in that section. So every Sunday-ish before the start of my week, you know, depending on when your week starts, but let's say classes are Monday through Friday. So on Sunday evenings, my strategy was to look at what I had going on for the week coming up. And I would see, because it's already written in my calendar, all those things in red, those things that have to happen, the quizzes, the projects, the classes, whatever it is, Now I know what I have to get done, but this is the time when I plan when I'm going to do it. So let's say I've got a paper due on Thursday and I haven't started it yet. Well, I know that I need to start blocking out some time Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to get that paper done. So I'll start allocating time blocks to that project. Maybe I'll work on it for two hours on Monday, an hour and a half on Tuesday, and then another two hours on Wednesday. So I'm giving myself five and a half hours to get this paper done. And this is key, you guys. I want you to really start paying attention to how long it takes you to do things so that as projects come up, you can start to plan ahead how much time you will need to get it done. So if you know you're really slow at writing papers, maybe you'll give yourself more time. If you're a fast writer, you might be able to give yourself less time as you do those discussion board posts that all schools love to make you do. And you realize, okay, I spend about an hour and a half writing my first initial post and then about 30 to 45 minutes responding to my classmates. You can block out the right amount of time for each task. So I can't emphasize this enough that allocating a certain amount of time to each task is highly important. So I want you to start putting those things into your calendar. And as you do that, your day is going to fill up, obviously. Well, this gives you a really good idea of what your schedule looks like so that you don't overcommit or overextend yourself. So for instance, I've got a crazy week coming up this week. I've got something like three doctor's appointments. I have two clinical days. I have meetings for, quote, the empire. I have a lot going on. And if I didn't block out time for each activity, it would be really easy for me to overcommit. I always have things that I want to do for you guys, but I can't do all of them every week. And this coming week is intense. So I had to get out my pen and some post-it notes because my planner, honestly, for this week coming up, did not have enough space in it for all the things that I needed to do. So I wrote out on Wednesday an example of what my day looks like. So from 7.45 to 8.45, I have a doctor's appointment. So I'm not going to be able to do anything else at that time. From 8.45 to 9.45, I'm going to physical therapy because I mucked up my shoulder at work. So I'm going to physical therapy to help fix that. And then 
from 9 to 11. I'm working on putting some information together for some potential advertisers that want to advertise on this podcast. How exciting is that? And then I go straight to yet another doctor's appointment after that until about 1300. And then from 1330 to 1430, I have a meeting with a print rep at a printer that is working on the planners for next year. And then from 1500 to 1630, I've allocated an hour and a half to write my responses to some discussion board posting. So finally, I'm getting to my schoolwork at 1500 that day. And then from 1700 to 1800, I'm going to give an hour of my time to helping my husband edit a book that he's working on. So I've got a really full day. And if I hadn't blocked out each thing that I have to do and, and think realistically about how long those things will take, including drive time, I probably would have overcommitted to what I could get done as far as school goes or the website or things like that go. So I invite you to start blocking out your days just like that, all the things that you have to get done and allocating realistic amounts of time to them. And I can't say enough about how this really lessens your anxiety about the overwhelming workload that you have. Once you have a plan in place and you follow that plan, you know things are going to get done. So be realistic with your time frames, block out that time and respect that time. Maybe there are times when you will get something done faster than you anticipated and that is great. Rather than waste that time with a time-wasting activity, I invite you to just look ahead at what the next thing is and get a jump on that. Ideally, towards the end of the day, you'll be able to knock off a little bit early, do that self-care, do something good for yourself, or mindlessly watch Netflix for an hour. But it's really great if you can get things done early, even better. One more thing that I want to mention about your time management and looking at what you need to get done for the day. Try not to give yourself more than three high priority things to get done in a day. Depending on how much time they take, if you give yourself way too many things to get done, the chances that they won't get done is pretty high and can be really overwhelming. Now, I'm not saying that your to-do list might not have five or six things on it, but really focus on what are the three most important things that I have to get done in this time. Identify what those are, assign time to them, and commit to getting those three things done. And as you are assigning time to things, I want you guys to stay committed to that. So for instance, let's say I'm working on my project for my physical assessment class and it's going to be amazing. And I can very easily get into my PowerPoint presentation and spend a lot of time making the graphics look really great and the colors and layout. I don't have time for that. I'm going to give myself two hour blocks of time. And when that two hour block of time is done, I'm going to stop working on that project and move on to something else. And the point of that is that when you know you have a limited amount of time to work on something, you really do buckle down and focus on getting things accomplished. So think about what you're doing, the work you are producing, and try to stay in that producing mode as much as you can as you work your way through your schedule. So I hope this brief introduction to a time management system helps inspire you to find a solution that works for you, implement it, and commit to it. So if you're not interested in me talking about all the benefits of the planner that I create, you can sign off now, but I am going to go through a quick little overview of it for those of you that are interested. And then I'm going to link to a YouTube video that will show even more detail and the functionality and how to use it in the show notes. So first of all, guys, this is a big planner. That's why I named it the big, beautiful planner. It is eight and a half by 11 and pretty sturdy with a solidly laminated cover and it has monthly tabs, which is a new thing we added this time based on your feedback. 
So the first thing that it has when you open it up is a whole year's calendar for 2019 and then a page called the big picture with a space for each month. And on this page, I like to write the big things that are happening like first day of school or spring break or vacation or things like that. Just big things that are happening that year. And then it has space for things like your New Year's resolutions, because I love setting New Year's resolutions on January 1st, and then I make it to about January 5th, but maybe I'll do better this year. And then space for you to write down the things that you're thankful for. And the reason that I included this is because I really find that gratitude and expressing gratitude and feeling gratitude can really help you feel less depleted when your emotional reserves are low. And there will be times in nursing school when your emotional reserves are really low, when you feel lonely, when you feel isolated, when you feel stressed. And it's just nice to go back and focus on all those things that bring you joy, all those things that you're thankful for in your abundant, beautiful life. So that's at the very beginning of the planner. And then we get into the months of the year. So each month has a double page spread covering the whole month. So you get this big bird's eye view of your monthly schedule. And then it has space for you to commit to a healthy habit for that month. And I joke that mine is always to drink enough water because I'll start off strong and then halfway through the month, it'll slack off and then I recommit to it the next month. So things like drinking your um, water or taking your daily vitamin or washing your face before you go to bed so you don't go to bed with makeup on, whatever it is, some kind of healthy habit that you can commit to for that month. So you're really focusing on your wellness during a time when you're pretty stressed as it is. And then there's space right below that to mark down some goals or global to-do items for that month, maybe things that don't have a specific due date, but that you kind of want to get done that month. And then we turn the page and we get into the weeks for that month. And this is the most functional, amazing part of this planner. So each weekly spread covers two pages. And what I love about this planner is that I am a list maker. And if you've toyed with bullet journaling because it's just so focused on list making, but it didn't work for you because it was so hard to plan future events, then you are probably going to love this planner because the whole left side of the weekly spread is basically lists and planning. So there's a section for things that are due. This is where you can write down all your assignments, your projects, your papers, your quizzes, your discussion board posts, everything that is due and on what day that week that it's due. Then there's to-do list. There's a to-do list for school and a to-do list for home so that you can keep both sides of your life separate and highly functional. And then the signature part to this planner is called my plan for the week. And this is my favorite part. So it has space for four items and you can track four items each week. And what you track or plan is entirely up to you. So let's say, for instance, you have two kids, you have a job and you want to plan healthy meals. So on the first row across, and it's laid out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, et cetera, you could plan child number one, what their schedule is that week. Do they have soccer on Mondays, ballet on Wednesdays, and a spelling test on Friday? Get that in there. Put in both kids, put in your work schedule, your school schedule, whatever, your meal plan in that fourth row across, and What you'll end up with is just a quick weekly snapshot where you can look and say, oh my goodness, Wednesday is going to be hectic. I'm in clinical. My one child has ballet that night. The other one has gymnastics. Guess what? We're getting um, a pizza that night for dinner. So you can really just plan your week and get a global view of it. And then there's space for some random notes at the bottom. And every weekly spread has a nursing fact on it. So for instance, in the first week of January, the nursing fact is that some drugs can cause delirium in the elderly, specifically anticholinergics and benzodiazepines. And if you did not already know that, you just learned something. And I've 
asked my previous customers what they thought about these nursing facts, and all of them said that they helped them so much and even saved their bacon on a test more than once. And then on the right side of this weekly spread are your days of the week in vertical format so that you can block out your time and really make the most of your plan for that week. So you've got to-do lists on one side, time blocking, time management on the other. So each month goes through just like that. And then at the end, there's bonus pages in the miscellaneous section. So here we have pages for you to organize group projects. And if you're like me, you end up being the group leader for all the group projects, um, which is fine. At least then you know it's going to get done really well, right? So it's space for you to organize the project, when it's due, who the leader is, a quick description of the project and its goals, who the members are, how best to reach them, and then who does what and by when. And this will really help you keep those group projects on track. And there's space for about six of these, six or eight, because you really will have a lot of group projects in nursing school. And then there's a payments tracker, so you can put down all the bills that you have due and when you pay them, because when you're super busy and going 100 miles an hour, high likelihood that you could forget something mundane like paying the electric bill. So let's get that done, and then you don't have to worry about missing those important things. And then if you're trying to save up, a little savings plan tracker for you as well. And then one of the things I really love about this planner is the section called Things to Explore. And this is where you can jot down all those things that you're going to check out when you have a little spare time. Books that you want to read, movies to watch, restaurants to go to, recipes to try, products to check out, websites to explore, etc. So that you can have something to look forward to because we all need that. And then it has a space for you to write down some gift ideas or even just random acts of kindness that you want to give to other people throughout the year. And just keep track again. This is pulls back into that gratitude aspect of who do we care about? Who's important? How can I show them I love them? And it's not always a gift. Sometimes it's a random act of kindness. And it's just nice to keep track of those things. And it helps you keep those people that are supporting you and loving you top of mind. And then there's a wellness journal. So you can just periodically check in with yourself. How's your stress level? What's your joy level? Are you having joy in your life? What's your energy like? How much sleep are you getting? Do you have challenges right now? And do you have triumphs? So this could be anything. If you're tracking weight loss, it's that. If you're trying to get to bed by 11 o'clock every night, maybe you're tracking that. Whatever triumphs you have, I want you to keep track of them as they go to your wellness. And then there's a page in the very back so that you can write down everybody's birthdays, anniversaries, things to look forward to coming up in the next year, and then giving yourself some space to write down a few goals and your rewards for those goals there as well. So that is the Big Beautiful Planner, the Nursing Student Edition. Very excited about that. You can link to it at bigbeautifulplanner.com calm and get it there. And then I also make a version that's not for students. So if you're graduating or maybe you're an educator listening to this podcast and you don't need a nursing student version, I do have a smaller version for busy women on the go. And that is called the beautiful life edition. So both are available at bigbeautifulplanner.com. That is the end of my shameless product plug. I'm going to let you guys go. We're at half an hour. I think that's plenty. You've given half an hour of your time to me and I very much appreciate it and hope you enjoy our time together as much as I do. So take care, everyone. Get those planners out. Get that digital calendar out. Start blocking out your time and let me know if it works for you. And I'll be back in a couple of weeks and we'll do this all again. This podcast is brought to you by StraightAnursingStudent.com. Copyright Mo Media.